Hello, I'm Abby X Toy Cat, and today I want to show you an example of how wacky and wild Minecraft ravines can be when you're playing the Bedrock Edition of Minecraft. They can break pretty much any part of the game, even when they exist normally, but today they don't exist normally because instead there is a pillager outpost in one, there is a stronghold in another, and next to both of those there is actually, interestingly enough, a ruined portal alongside this one, fascinating enough, which is right here at the spawn. There is a lava pit, there is a ruin portal and that is right next to this spawn forest. There's so much more about the seed I want to share with you in today's Seed Sunday as I'll be doing today which I hope you will enjoy. The seed's going to be on screen right now. Welcome back to Seed Sunday, the weekly series where I show you beans for Minecraft which are particularly interesting and worth checking out in some way. And today's seed is very much worth checking out. I would even say it's already a great seed just because of the fact that you spawn next to a plains biome and that plains biome will obviously give you access to horses, pigs, cows, all of the animals and also a great flat place to build if that's what you're into but also because of the never update you might want to go to the never super early and being just three uh, actually four blocks of obsidian away from being able to start a portal is really really nice in my opinion and realistically because all you need is a, a you know water bucket to turn this into a never portal you can go to the never very fast on this seed and then you can also on top of that enjoy all of the other wonders which again isn't just this delightfully large plains biome at spawn they'll allow you to build some form of city or whatever giant things you want to build without having to flatten terrain but also, if we head to the north just a little bit over this mountain range right here, you'll notice this flower forest, rare Minecraft biome, great way to get a lot of flowers. Then you'll notice a sunflower plains, and then in the background, you might just notice there's a pillager outpost. And the pillager outpost, you're probably not thinking to yourself, how tall is this right now? You're probably thinking, oh, actually, that looks slightly smaller than average. Must be the terrain getting in the way. But let me tell you a wonderful fact about the way that pillager outposts generate. Um, because of the, uh, you know, the want to generate a certain height above the terrain that is around it, you'll see how not only is, uh, you know, it always going to generate to the same height, but also it can have a different floor depending on the terrain, and uh, this leads to some very interesting things like this. So as you can see, there's a pretty big pillager outpost here. How big is it? Well, let's uh, measure this, uh, you know, imperatively. Uh, if we actually go down below the ground, you can see how here at layer 5, we can actually find some cobblestone. Uh, nice and easily rise, we can see. There is some... <laughs> actually, wait, here is some cobblestone. I'm right next stopped up to it. If you go from the very base of this thing all the way to the top, you'll see how there's mossy cobblestone all the way. You'll see how there's spruce logs, uh, dark log logs all the way. You'll see how it goes from layer 5 all the way up to layer 85 when you're at the top here. 87, indeed. Uh, which means that this is actually an 80 two block high pillager outpost. This is the longest, tallest, you know, it's just, it's just a tall boy, right? It's a long boy. It's a ridiculously sized pillager outpost and it exists here in Minecraft in the middle of a ravine. <laughs> and as you can see, sometimes pillager, pillagers don't realize that it's not a small fool. It's a pretty big one and they make it regardless. It's pretty, uh, you know, hilarious in my opinion just to see this thing. And uh, there's so many questions I have when I saw this. So how about I'll use today's video to answer some of them. First of all, yes, it is technically speaking a normal uh, pillager outpost. If you can get to the entrance, which is just over there, you could treat it just like normal, and you might not, I mean, again, if you weren't paying attention, you would not even know that anything was different because it's a normal pillager outpost, except because this entrance is down here, because again, it try it tries to, it will generate higher if it needs to for the terrain, but this terrain, uh, you know, there's like a floor to where these things can generate. But because of that, it means that the terrain around it is very slightly higher, and with just a single block placed over here and a single block over here, um, if you want to do that uh, sort of thing, uh, or what you can actually do is you can jump in at the second layer, making this actually an easier than average pillager outpost to climb because you've got one fewer layer you have to climb through. I mean, obviously you could climb any of them, but this one in particular is easy to jump across because it's so close to land. However, um, well, unlike other pillager outposts, there's an extreme risk to taking this one on because it's surrounded by a pit of lava. So next up, the question is like, so what is actually inside this pillager outpost base? I mean, they built this entire thing right on the outside. What about on the inside? And this is the shocking thing, it's actually birch planks all the way down. There is 60 plus blocks in a giant circular area of just birch planks. Birch planks and 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 birch planks all the way down into the center where it, technically speaking it's birch planks but because of the little lava gap actually I think we made this ourselves. But because of, oh and it's just because because the uh, lava burns through the wood and then it starts to burn through this, you start to get this effect on the inside instead. So yeah there's going to be some very interesting uh, ramifications on your world performance because this much fire is usually not advised but yeah it's actually made entirely of birchwood planks which are slowly burning themselves all the way up 
Again, it's just a beautiful, weird thing to find. This, to me, seems like the perfect place to make a Minecraft base. No one expects to find you there, right? Also, another interesting thing is that because the things around the pillager outpost, like the Iron Golem rooms, or even just the little uh, things spawn, uh, as you can see, this is spawned right here. So, uh, and again, it was meant to be an entire wooden structure, but the rest of it burned because it's next to lava. So instead, you just have some pumpkins chilling at the bottom of a ravine next to a crafting table. Very weird that this is naturally generated, but a very real thing. And so that is the story of the tool outpost. It is an 82 block high outpost that probably shouldn't exist, but only exists because of Minecraft's very, 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 um, you know, liberal use of structures and just kind of allowing things to generate how they will. Rather than treating this like a bug, it's treated as a wacky, and unique feature, and I really love that personally, um, because I haven't mentioned that also as well as having more pumpkins over here and more pumpkins over there, I haven't mentioned there's actually a ruined portal nearby as well. I mean, I did in the intro, but who remembers, who watches the first 30 seconds of YouTube videos? Uh, you know, shout, re type in the comments if you watch the first 30 seconds of YouTube videos. That's such a rare, unique thing that you do there, friend. It's almost like YouTube recommended this video to you. Look, type that in the comments down below too. Anyway, so <laughs> here there is, as you can see, a ruined portal. It's one of the ones that has lava around it, so you have to kind of drain that a little bit um, if you want to. But if you do decide to go to the nether right over here, which again, easy enough thing to do, you just got to finish out the portal using the obsidian that the game itself even gives you, which is very uh, kind of it to do. And then you got to just, um, you know, again, remove these middle blocks, usually not using obsidian, I'll admit. So you could also just use grass blocks like this, and then you re remove both the grass blocks, and in the time before the lava can flow in, you can have a nether portal, which theoretically should burn you alive and really isn't a good idea. But the reason it's a good idea to go into regardless it is because you're spawn in this basalt deltas but you're spawn the basalt deltas this close to a never fortress that's right never fortress there portal here do you see the distance literally two blocks one two it's a really great never spawn in my opinion i think basalt delta fortresses are the most interesting ones and uh, in case you're curious as to why that is you might think well i mean they're all the same so it's fun not only because you get these little particle effects everywhere including on the inside but also because some parts of the never fortress are replaced with the lava blocks from the the basalt delta itself again fun to look at maybe not so much to play through i mean lava is a dangerous thing it's a whole thing you could deal with Maybe by watching my video about things that work differently in the Never. But for now, let's talk about the fact that, um, as well as having a, a Never Fortress at spawn, which is delightful, that's what you want in a Minecraft seed. Let me show you how you spawn in this Basalt Deltas, which is this close to a Soul Sand Valley. It's actually two Soul Sand Valleys, it's weird. Um, but so someone commented on my recent video being like, oh, Toy Cat, you said these are two of the worst biomes in Minecraft, but they're my two favorite Never biomes. I mean, they look great, but they're awful to play with. But if you like these two biomes, great. But here's the thing, you can have four Never biomes in a span of just two 200 blocks. Let me show you on the uh, X coordinates right now. I'm in a, a soul sand valley when I'm at X 50, right? 50 blocks later, I'm in this, uh, you know, never uh, waste biome. And then another 50 blocks later, you'll notice how I'm in a warp forest. Four of Minecraft's five biomes in our 150 block uh, span of each other in a direct line. Because again, direct lines are essential for uh, boats and in minecarts not so essentially, but it's also handy for minecarts The fact that you can connect with just a hundred and fifty block ice pathway or minecart line um, You know something like that is really quite delightful in my opinion And if it's not delightful in your opinion, then you know what who hurt you who hurt you let, let me know so I can I can hurt them back for you Use the you know, I'm just gonna say comment down below for everything today. So comment down below who hurt you let me know and uh, I'll hurt them too. But the next thing I want to talk about is another ravine on this world. Because when I find something like this, I'm like, okay, that's cool. Where's the stronghold? And the answer to that question is over here to the northwest of spawn. So you can see the coordinates in the top uh, left right now if you want to. And you can see how there's a village right here. That's delightful, isn't it? If you dig down at any point in this village, but again, usually... As we all know in Bedrock, uh, strongholds try to generate below uh, the villagers, which means if you go below the well, you've got the best chance of finding yourself inside of the stronghold. Do you want to find the end portal location? I'll, I'll give you a clue you don't. It's It's got no eye offenders in there. It's not a great end portal. But what is great is the fact that this... Uh, you know, there's always up to two of these rooms per stronghold. Sometimes they're smaller, sometimes they're not. This one is two full, uh, you know, library rooms, which can both contain two chests, which or obviously uh, both of the times will contain sometimes books and paper, sometimes enchanted books. Man, we only got one on this one. But this is Frostwalker 2, rare enchantment. It's going to be different every time, but the fact that it can generate is really nice in my opinion. Um, but then there's a second one, just in case you didn't get what you wanted, because you know what? Uh, when it comes to Christmas in Minecraft, you get to reroll until you get these del this delightful boot enchantment. 
and indeed over here. I'm hoping we get... Oh, there we go. Smite and multi shot. Actually, not the best library. You're not just trader villagers like you're probably already doing. So anyway, with that said, let's now roll on from here to the fact that, did you know, this actually go goes over not only a few caves, but also at the surface. It goes right through a ravine right here. That's right, ravines and strongholds can happen for each other on bedrock. And in fact, even like some world record seeds have had that happen. Very fascinating stuff. Um, but this is a stronghold, not only going through a ravine, but it's a very bizarre ravine in the first place that as you can see, has these multiple crossing points across it. Again, why this happens is honestly mildly beyond me, but it's fascinating uh, that the game gives you this kind of great way down. Um, tumbling down to, uh, you know, bedrock to find diamonds is something you have to do on the Java version. Obviously, a lot of people will get diamonds for other ways. Um, but the fact is, on bedrock, one of the best ways to find diamonds is just go to one of these ravines, look around, and within no time whatsoever, you'll find some diamonds. These coordinates right here, you've got yourself at least one block of diamonds. You've got yourself two blocks of diamonds, three blocks of diamonds, four blocks of diamonds, Four, four, four diamonds, and all you gotta do is just jump down here into the water. It's really great that as well as giving you easy ways up and down, as well as having a stronghold in here, there's also four diamonds, and uh, it's just one of those great reminders that like, yeah, ravines in bedrock really are better than their Java counterparts. Why is that the case? I mean, it's interesting that like, they came to bedrock way later than Java, um, but it's a refined feature that I'd love to see come between platforms, and it's something uh, that if you play bedrock, you might not appreciate, but ravines are really awesome here. Also, what's awesome here, it, you know, having strongholds below villagers means that as well as having that, you also have a blacksmith here, which might have diamonds in. Let's not pretend it's definitely going to, okay, there's a diamond, heck yeah. <laughs> but like, sometimes it has diamonds, sometimes it doesn't. It's entirely randomly generated based on, uh, you know, like every time you load up the chest. Who knows what it'll be when you load it up. Um, but the fact that you can get it is really nice, in my opinion. And maybe you agree, or maybe you disagree. But that's the delightful thing about the internet. You can tell me in those comments down below why you think that these ravines and these villages are real bad, and your opinion is just as valid as the guy who told me about who hurt them. I mean, more or less, at least. Also, just for fun, only a few hundred blocks away from that stronghold, what are you gonna find? It's a buried treasure chest, which is nice because in Bedrock, there's a bug where you can't actually find these things without just digging around wildly in some beaches. So I've saved you that hassle. If Minecraft Bedrock is broken and you literally can't find it with the maps, then I feel like it's not cheating to mention that. Or maybe you do, in which case, purge your mind of those last few moments. And instead, let's mention how this is a great seed. It's not the perfect seed for survival. It's not even everything is uh, the best. Instead, to me, what this seed is, is a great point about how ravines are such a useful thing. Because Minecraft Bedrock has the philosophy of just letting things be broken to a certain extent, obviously that's going to hurt every now and then when something you think should work isn't. But that also has the nice secondary benefit, you know, the kind of just make things so they're functional, even if they're not 100% working. You get the weird situations where there's free diamond deep ravines that have weird interconnecting points like this. It gets to the weird situations where you have 70 block tool outposts, which are really uh, 80 block tool outposts, in fact. You know, I undersold my outpost, which is actually really fun in my opinion. And um, yeah, it's just an interesting uh, point about how different philosophies you know, again, with Java and Bedrock, they don't make things better or worse. You can try to believe that they are because, you know what, it's easy to believe that the thing that you're already doing is the best thing to do. Uh, but sometimes, uh, giving something a little bit of a whirl is a good idea. And you know what, that's too much philosophy for today's Seed Sunday. So let's finish this up by saying, tool, tool outpost sure is interesting, huh? You know what else is interesting? Hitting that subscribe button, because then you'll see more of my videos uh, daily on your homepage. Here's a ravine with a mine shaft. Not going through it, but like kind of nearby. That's pretty cool, right? Do you want to subscribe so you see more ravines and mine shafts? I bet you don't. Yeah, tricked you. Okay, thank you for watching, because I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.